Coming up, a new twist in a decades-old cold case involving a suspect arrested in Sioux Falls. Plus, women all over the country are celebrating the nation's new vice president. Hear from a local woman who says it brings her a new kind of hope. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A New York City man accused of killing three people in Rapid City made his first court appearance in Pennington County, nearly five months after the alleged triple homicide. 36-year-old Arnson Absolu is charged with three counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of Charles Red Willow, Ashley Nagy, and Dakota Zazer. 26-year-old Red Willow and 29-year-old Nagy were found dead on August 24th from multiple gunshot wounds inside a car at a park. The body of the 22-year-old Zizer was found in some woods outside the city about a month later. Police have said all three killings may be related to drugs. Absolu made his initial appearance Wednesday via a video feed from the jail. An 80-year-old Sioux Falls man charged in a cold case murder investigation in Minnesota is no longer in jail. Kelly News has learned Al Jean Vossen has been released and it all has to do with his declining health. Vossen was charged last summer in the 1974 stabbing death of Mabel Herman of Wilmer, Minnesota, but he's no longer being held in jail. From our understanding, uh, Mr. Vossen is in Iowa right now. He uh, was released from the Canyon County Jail um, after he suffered some medical complications where he was hospitalized. They weren't able to keep up with his care here and uh, the Minnesota Department of Corrections was unable to find uh, an appropriate care facility within the system. Chief Felt they is, uh, says they continue to pursue justice for Mabel Herman and her family once Vossen is healthy enough to return to jail. Turning to weather now, another round of snow on its way to Kettleland for the weekend. Let's see how much snow could fall with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, you two. Good morning, Kettleland. It could be another infamous two to four inches, what we have going in the forecast for the first half of the weekend. And then we have other chances for snow next week. In the meantime, today it will be slightly cooler than what we had yesterday, but still above average. Many locations in the 30s and 40s for afternoon highs. We'll continue to watch that snow chance this weekend and then maybe a couple of hits of snow next week. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thanks, Scott. Six South, South Dakotans received 11th hour pardons from former President Trump as he left office. But one pardon is more controversial than the rest. Vermilion native and longtime conservative political activist Paul Erickson received a pardon which was supported by Kellyanne Conway. Erickson was the boyfriend of Russian operative Maria Butina, who was deported back to Russia after admitting that she sought to infiltrate conservative political groups to promote Russia's agenda. However, Erickson's crimes didn't have to do with espionage, but rather fraud. Even though Erickson pled guilty to his crimes, the Trump administration said that his conviction was based off the Russian collusion hoax. And after finding no grounds to charge him with any crimes with respect to connections with Russia, he was charged with a minor financial crime. The Trump White House also announced five other pardons connected to South Dakota residents. Governor Kristi Noem thanked former President Trump for granting five pardons. The governor sent letters advocating for each one. They are John Nystrom, Gregory, Deborah, and Martin Jorgensen, and Jesse Freeze, who now goes by Jesse Jean. The statement from the White House press secretary says Freeze was 20 years old in 2012 when she was convicted of converting stolen checks and negotiating them through the bank where she worked as a teller. I didn't think I would get it. I mean, how many people apply for these? You know, like they don't come to everyone and. I just didn't know if I would get it, and oh man, <laughs> it's like nerve-wracking, nerve you know. In a statement released yesterday, the governor says the Trump administration has done an excellent job of balancing justice with forgiveness. Yesterday's swearing-in of Vice President Kamala Harris made history for multiple reasons. She's the first woman, the first black person, and the first person of Asian descent to hold the office. We'll let Capers watch the inauguration. She said she's particularly excited about Harris in her new role. For so long, especially for people that look like me, for, you know, women of color, you know, we've been told that we can't. Um, and she, you know, took the opportunity to prove to us, no, you can. Don't listen to what, you know, the world and what society tells you. Capers also pointed out Harris is a graduate of an HBCU, or historically black, college or university. Representative Dusty Johnson attended Wednesday's inaugural ceremony along with his 15-year-old son. Each member of Congress was allowed only one guest to the inauguration this year, and Johnson asked his son Max to join him. The pair watched as Joe Biden became the 46th president of the United States. 
I think regardless of who you support in any election, uh, you should appreciate the fact that a peaceful transfer of power is a beautiful American tradition. It, it is a blessing that uh, many people throughout history have not been able to enjoy. So I, I was happy to be there, as I think Max was, uh, to be able to support that. Governor Christy Noem also attended with her daughter Cassidy. Senator Thune was there with his wife Kimberly. One man in South Dakota relished Wednesday's inauguration more than most. World War II veteran and 98-year-old Donald Merriman watched President Joe Biden take the oath of office with great pleasure from his living room in Lemon. Merriman watched along with his 78-year-old brother, Roger Merriman, who took these two photos and sent them to his wife, Helen. Helen then passed the photos on to Kelloland News and, in an interview, said throughout 2020, her brother-in-law continuously said he wanted to live long enough to vote for Joe Biden. You can read more of that interview in this Kettleland.com original online right here, right now. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, weather for the weekend. Looking ahead and it looks colder and chances of snow. Let's take a look at that as we fill in the weather maps here a little bit with some blue and that's our representative snow chance. Temperatures during the day on Saturday, pretty much 20s all across the region. So. We're not going to really deal with mixed precipitation this time. I think it is going to be snow and uh, most of this without much wind. And that's some good news. And that's really important to point that out because other systems, we've had lots of wind with these snows, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem this go around. I think going into Sunday, things will be wrapping up. We'll keep an eye on these temperatures. We may have a tough time warming on Sunday. And this is an interesting weather map, isn't it? By Monday morning, there might be a case uh, for single digits, maybe even below zero a bit in the northeast. Also, I do want to point out there's some snow back in the forecast Monday. That's mainly a Nebraska-Iowa issue, but could sneak a little more into South Dakota. Speaking of which, you can see the forecast across Kettle Land into South Dakota looks to be in the 2 to 4 across the south on Saturday for Sioux Falls. And then there's more snow next week possible with that area of low pressure in the desert southwest. So kind of all adds up here. Forecast today, 37. Sioux Falls, we've got uh, just a couple clouds around, but generally a good dose of sun at least with that northwest wind. Tonight, trending colder. Brookings, six above. Marshall, three. And then tomorrow, back in the 30s west of Sioux Falls, but only 20 for a high in Worthington. We're starting to notice those kind of numbers. And the seven days definitely cooler with highs 20s. Uh, we're going to slip back in the teens probably by Tuesday. And I want to watch those highs there uh, early next week. We may end up cutting that a little bit more. We've done that in Aberdeen and overnight lows. Single digits are returning. Not necessarily as much snow for Aberdeen at this point, but a couple of chances here. That Saturday outlook is still at least 50%. Pierre also looking at a good chance of snow Saturday, followed by a 20% chance on Monday. And yet again, another opportunity by middle of next week. Rapid City, the yeah, outgone are the 40s and 50s, probably 30s for highs. Check out details with our forecast online right here at Kettleland.com.